Hey everyone, today I'm going to talk about a topic which will, which I believe will help you in the fight against the coronavirus. It's about the authority which you have as a believer. Please understand when I tell you this. Now take your Bible and check if whatever I am saying is true or not. Because I am 100% sure that it is true. I have tested it and it works. And this will change your fight against the coronavirus. Now, all I want to know in the beginning is this. Would you like to actively fight against the coronavirus as a believer? If you are in, please don't close this, but pay co close attention to what I'm saying till the very end. Try to see if whatever, whatever I'm saying is true or not, but check in the Bible. But you will not be disappointed because there's a lot at stake here. Let me ask, let me start by asking you this. Whose responsibility do you think it is to fight against the coronavirus? Is it our responsibility or God? If possible, pause this video for a few minutes and write down your answer. I wanted to start by asking such a polarizing question because there are lots of opinions which are being thrown around. Because in the next few minutes, I will try my best to explain this topic. Let's go to Luke 9, verse 37 to 42. Now, in this chapter, we see an incident where Jesus is on his way somewhere and, and suddenly a man stops him and he says that his child is possessed. Then he says that he begged the disciples to drive out the demon, but they were unable to do so. Now, let's pause and try to think what Jesus', Jesus response would you think would have been. Let me now ask you this question again. Whose responsibility was it to fight against the child's deliverance? Now, if you, if you answered God earlier, I'm guessing you would have answered Jesus now, right? So we might think that Jesus would have said, Thank you guys for bringing this person to me, this, this kid to me. Only I can actually deliver this uh, kid. And I have to check with the father if it's my, the will or not or anything of that sort. Because only I have the authority because the right, that's the right thing to do. Did he say any of that? No. An emphatic no. Instead, Jesus was really angry and livid. And he said, Oh, unbelieving and perverse generation. Well, that's strong. Jesus replied, How long must I remain with you and put up with you? Believe it or not, Jesus was not happy that the child was brought over to him, but rather... He was angry that they, would, they could not drive the demon out. If you read Luke 9 verse 1, it says that Jesus had given them authority over all demons and power to cure diseases, and yet the disciples could not. It's the same chapter. So if you have authority, you and I are expected to use the authority for delivering people from the devil and cause deliverance. And in this case of the current situation, the coronavirus. But yeah, hang in there, provided we have authority. So everything hinges around the fact whether we have authority or not. You might be saying right now, wait a minute, you are twisting God's arm and all that. Now, wait a minute. If God himself gave the authority to us, that wouldn't be twisting, right? Let's go to Genesis 1 verse 28, where the creation, what happened at the creation. And God blessed him and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and the f over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Genesis 1 verse 28 from the King James Version. That's what I read. Notice that he gave man dominion. He gave them absolute authority over the earth. In Psalms 115 verse 16, it says, The heaven, in verse 16, The heaven, of even the heavens, are the Lord's. But the earth hath he given to the children of men. Psalm 115 verse 16. He gave man the authority over the earth. In fact, the word subdue is kabash in Hebrew, which means that the ex that exercise dominion over anything. And if, if force, if by force, if necessary, if anything does not submit, that word, word actually includes 
the meaning that you have the right to use force. So it was God's will for us to have dominion. However, what happened? Why are we in this stage we are in now? Fast forward to Luke 4, 6, verse 7, and we see in verse 6, And the devil said unto him, All this power I will give thee, he's talking to Jesus, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whoever I will give it. You, you can see devil saying this to Jesus. And he says, If you will worship me, all shall be thine. Luke 4, verse 6 to 7. But how did Satan get control? He's, he says that he has control at this point. And how did he even have the audacity to tell Jesus that he had all authority delivered to him? And Jesus not stopping him. Jesus does not refute him. This happened at the garden. When did Adam give authority to Satan? Because we originally saw that Adam had the authority. Now Satan is saying he has the authority. When Adam, when did Adam give the authority? When Adam and Eve obeyed Satan at the Garden of Eden and when they ate from the forbidden fruit, when they ate the forbidden fruit, they basically became the slaves of Satan and were under, under Satan. Romans 6.16 says that, Do you not know that whom you yield yourselves, to whom you yield yourselves as slaves for obedience, you are slaves to him, to him whom you obey? It's written there in Romans 6 verse 16. So does that mean that Satan has authority over a believer now? So that would make it even worse, worse right? So that means uh, he can do whatever he wants. Now, here's the best part. Here's the best part. Oh, praise God. I mean, if we had, if things would have stopped by that point, it would have been worse. But praise God for this. Now, let's move on. Move on to Ephesians 1, verse 18 to 23. And you can see a certain part of it. And let's read that. Ephesians 1, verse 18 to 23. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened so that you will know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of his glory, of his inheritance in the saints. And now, now Paul is saying what it is. And what is the surpassing greatness of his power towards us who believe? These are in accordance with the working of the strength of his might, which he brought about in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. Now, here's the best part. And he put all things in subjection under his feet. And he put all things in subjection under his feet. And gave him as a, as a head over all things to the church. And he gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Amen. It's very clear from this verse that where he gave him as, as head over all things to the church. Wow. Jesus won back all power and authority. Now, how did he win back all power and authority? When he died on the cross. He defeated, when he died on the cross, he defeated the devil and crushed him. And he was placed in the heavenly places. And we are placed with him in the heavenly places. In Ephesians 1 verse 22, we read that he put all things in subjection under his feet and gave his head, him as head over all things to the church. Wow. The Bible says that there is power and authority in those who believe. The Bible calls this a surpassing greatness of his powers towards us who, power towards us who believe. Paul goes on to explain the kind of power that is working in us. He says that this is in accordance with the working of the strength of his might, which he brought about in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him in the right hand in the heavenly places. He says that the power that is working in us is the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. The resurrection power. That is the power. There is no greater power than that. If there was a power that could raise the Son of God from the dead, there is no greater power than that. Amen. That's proof number one, right? 
Well, if you think that's the only place it was written where Jesus, I mean, like that was the only place where it is written uh, about this authority, but that's not true. Because Jesus said right after he rose from the dead in Matthew 28, verse 18 and 19, he said, and Jesus came up, I'm reading from that, and Jesus came up and spoke to them saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, all authority has been given to me, which means the devil has no authority. All authority is with Jesus. No authority at this point is with devil. devil. And he said, go therefore. He was saying, I mean, why would he say, go therefore? All authority has been given to me. Go therefore. I mean, again, remember Ephesians 1.22, which said, he gave him as a head over all things to the church, Right? He was saying that we are using His authority in His name. Now pay close attention to this as I, as I want the reality of this whole thing to sink in because it is very crucial as we, do, as we fight against this virus from the devil. In the case of disciples, they had authority. And they did not believe in the authority and they were unable to use it. However, Jesus was around and he, even though he got mad at them, but finally he cast out the demon and everything was fine. He saved their faith. Now, now look at us at this situation. The coronavirus is from the devil for sure. And we have the authority against the devil, but because of unbelief and what's whatsoever the reason may be, we are not using the authority we have in Christ Jesus. However, in the case of disciples, they could run to Jesus and he could rescue the whole mission. But now Jesus is on earth through us. He's not here as he was 2,000 years earlier. He's on earth through us. He's dependent on us. We are his body. He expects us to do things. And he cannot do anything on earth unless through us because we are his body not convinced it, it might seem far-fetched but what does Matthew 18 18 say this is something which touched me uh, like which spoke to me a few years ago whatever you bind on earth Matthew 18 18 whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven now tell me where does the binding start with us on earth it will be bound in heaven why because it is Jesus operating through us in Christ Jesus that's what it means it is a greater significance than what we are understanding in 1st John 4 verse 17 it says as he is so are we in this world and then also in Ephesians 3 20 it says now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than abundantly beyond all that we ask or think now, most of us usually stop at that point saying that, okay, he's able to do far more abundantly beyond that we can ask or think. But the next part says, according to the power that works within us. I hope that convinces you now, right? You and I are the one who is supposed to fight against the coronavirus because we are the body of Christ. If we remain silent, if we remain callous about the whole thing, and if we remain in fear, you can see who's winning then. You can see that that's not the kind of victory Jesus wanted. God, you can cry all you want. You can cry and plead God for mercy, asking God to come down and heal. But that's not going to happen unless believers take the authority and stand up again against the powers of darkness. And when you command, since you have the authority, the devil has to listen. You might be a nobody. You might not be a pastor. People might look down upon you saying that you're nobody. How would you know that? It doesn't matter. It does not matter. You remember, I tell you about one incident which happened to me in Padova, Italy. Now Italy is going through a lot of pain right now. But one, I mean, we were in Italy. Anisha and I were in Italy for a few years. And, and one, a few years ago, um, Anisha and I were walking back home with our friend whose arm was fractured. It was dark. And while we were walking back, we could see a couple on the other side of the road. 
and there was a bus stop and they were just arguing. And we were on this side of the road and we just saw them when we just kept walking. We didn't mind. We, we were minding our own business. Suddenly we could hear her yell and running and we thought she was fighting with her boyfriend. So we, we didn't want to get involved and, apart, and also we didn't understand the language. So we didn't know what was actually happening. Um, now we could hear her running in our direction toward, towards us. So, but there's a, there's a pathway. So we just gave way for her to run away, like run. Maybe she's running away from a boyfriend. But she ran directly to this friend of mine and started choking him. He, she caught him right at the uh, throat. Boy, she was strong. She didn't look that strong, but she was very strong. She was not looking right. Something was wrong. Now, Anisha was the first to rescue because I was puzzled and stunned. Anisha was like, stop it. And she was trying to intervene in the whole situation. Suddenly, I grabbed her and I said, in the name of Jesus, let him go. And guess what happened? She froze. She could not move. She could not move. She, she was still, she froze till her boyfriend took her away. Now, I had never used the authority in Christ Jesus. And it was a lonely place with no one there. And it worked. You can use the authority you have in Christ Jesus. And I guarantee that you will see things happening these days as we together use the authority we have in Christ Jesus. If you and I step up, if you and I, along with the body of Christ, step up, we can end this today. We can end this today. When James was murdered, the church stood together and they prayed in the upper room and Peter was delivered. Now I want, that's why I'm one today. I want, we all, I want us all to stand together in authority, not just pleading God, saying, God, please come down and do something, because that's unbiblical. I will, I will ask you one thing. In all the healings which has happened in the New Testament, this is something which you can check yourself. In all the healings, how many times have you ever seen God in Jesus pleading God to, make, to heal someone? And you don't see that throughout the New Testament at all. Someone asked me this question and it changed my perspective altogether. It changed my life. It's because we have the authority. We have the authority. I mean, like it's Jesus' authority, but it has been given to us because we are in Christ. Let's end this. Church, let's stand together and end this because the devil, we will not allow the devil to have victory so whenever it comes close to a, like anyone who you know or anything just command in the name of jesus devil you shall not come anywhere near our family you shall not come anywhere near our country you shall not come anywhere near any of the people and this shall end today because we have spoken in christ jesus